Today's episode is brought to you by Cattle. Every product launch faces a chicken and egg problem. You need reviews to convert, but you need conversions to get reviews. Cattle can help. Cattle helps brands win share. They leverage their consumer panel for insights, collecting receipts, and driving product ratings and reviews. It is the largest daily active survey panel in Canada, with over 10,000 daily active users and over 100,000 monthly active users. Let cattle be your chicken and or your egg, depending on your perspective. Visit getcattle.com to learn more. The product gets in. They don't have the multi-million dollars that Pepsi has to spend on marketing. Mm -hmm merchandising and marketing material shelf talkers. So what do they do? Well, they either get discontinued, they expire on shelf, or their promo dollars have just went to waste. Welcome to Hearts and Carts, the CPG podcast, the podcast about the people behind the products that are winning hearts and filling carts. This cast is for anyone with an interest in the world of consumer products. We're your hosts, Justin Osborne and Alex Hill, and our mission is to bring you weekly content that helps you be a better and more informed CPG professional. Welcome back to another episode of Hearts and Carts, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. It's Alex, your co-host. I'm here with Justin, and we are getting ready for a really cool conversation. Justin, who are we chatting with tonight? We are chatting with Amanda Kenny, who is the founder and chief merchandiser of Hive Naturals. Hive Naturals is Canada's first and only merchandising agency specifically focused on servicing food and beverage brands in the natural product space. She's worked with a ton of really exciting brands, a lot of which we've had on the pod, like Moonshine Mamas, Righteous Gelato, Chiwis, Midday Squares, Humble Potato Chips. And she's going to give us a little insight into the world of merchandising, her career, and how brands can be successful. Awesome. Now, if you haven't already, please follow us on social media, either LinkedIn or Instagram. Throw us a five-star review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And don't hesitate to reach out with any feedback, thoughts, or just to say hi. Let's jump into that conversation. I'm gonna follow everywhere you go. Cause girl, there's something Amanda, hey, how Amanda. are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Doing hey. good. Nice. Nice How's to see up? you again. It's been a little it, while. It has, yeah. What was it? Food Pro. It was right? Food Pro, that's right. Yes. Yeah, we were chatting then. Yeah. Um, and I got to do a little hive ride along too at that time. So that was, that was pretty cool. It's like back to you back. Did. And then the person, yeah. Alex, the person I did a hive ride along with never met before. Turns out they're from Kitchener and we know a lot of the same people. It's the weirdest small That's world awesome. situation ever. Yeah. And now lives in Vancouver. So I'm surprised. Like it's though, right. It's like, I always thought Ireland was small, but in Vancouver or in the food world, everybody's connected or they know someone who knows someone. That's true. That's that's very, very true. And I used to live like one, maybe two blocks over from, from Amanda and Kits, it turns out as well, I found out. Wow. It's also a small world. Thing. I didn't know that. We didn't know each other at the time, but how funny is that? It's so it is, good. It's a small world. CPG world is small. Natural CPG world, even smaller. Vancouver CPG world is like tiny. It's like every, everyone knows everyone. And it gets yeah. tight pretty quick. It's tight. Yeah. But how's everything in your world? Good? It's great. Like still, yeah, super busy. I always think that it's going to calm down. I'm like, next week will be slower, but then it's never slower. I don't know why I say that, but <laughs> busy is good, I guess. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. opposite, the opposite would not be, not be good. No scary times. Yeah. yeah. You had a good summer. Yeah. The best summer I went. So a lot of weekends on the sunshine coast, which is always great. Near the water um yeah and today is interesting in vancouver so raining alex are you in vancouver as well i'm actually near hamilton i'm like the other side i'm yeah. like a wanna i'm like a wannabe west coast okay okay well the summer is officially gone today and i know mm -hmm. we needed the rain but it is coming heavy and hard so i'm glad i made the most of those summer days Aww. yeah we, it is it is scary how quickly like it turns from like i was complaining about how hot it was at night sleeping and then yesterday was like a terrible thunder rainstorm and i was like yeah. well this sucks <laughs> it's like, going, it's like going back to that <laughs> yeah. like, well, this sucks it's like it's already over 
yeah we're yeah it's we're always like a little bit ahead alex of like our season so it's like fall right. it's like happening now it feels this like. year you guys are behind us we've been getting like 10 degree mornings it's true for over a week and a half yeah That's you true. guys are you guys you guys are getting the better weather now i think it's flipped so what well, is it's, happening? it's good that's good it's a good sign the the earth is doing well <laughs> anyways <laughs> uh a quick transition into more positive thoughts welcome to the show amanda really, really excited to, to, to have, you, have you on for for everyone listening we've got amanda kenny who's the founder and chief merchandiser at hive naturals and hive naturals works with a number of exciting brands whose um founders we've actually had on the show a lot of them like midday squares and moonshine mamas and righteous gelato and the list goes local. on and on made with local exactly yeah. so there's there's so many of them and, and you're working on some of the the best brands out there absolutely a really really cool um list there and so what we'd love to do is just like learn about your story and, and learn about your past and sort of how you got to to where you are now and and um get into hive and what that is and all that but maybe we start from like the beginning like like who is amanda like you know what did you want to be growing up how did you end up where you are <laughs> take us all the way back Okay. Um, well, I'm from Ireland originally, and th I studied business in college. And the moment I finished college, I was like, get me out of here. So I traveled to Asia, did the whole Asia thing for six months, and then moved to Australia. Lived there for three years, which was pretty epic. 21 of us, we had a great time. Oh. And um, yeah, then I got deported because I overstayed my visa. So that was <laughs> the end of that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I traveled again. I did more of Asia, South America, super fun. And I was like, okay, now I'm 23. I'm ready to move back to Ireland. Lasted six months in Ireland and I'm like, I'm out again. So I decided to get a visa for Canada, but I was only coming for six months because the Olympics were here and that's all I wanted to see. Mm. And 13 years later, here I am. So that didn't happen. Um, yeah, I fell in love with Canada, but BC in particular, I ski, I snowboard, <laughs> Whistler's an hour and a half away. It's pretty great. Um, and I fell into the CPG world. I actually started Wolf in a, you know, I had, had many jobs. I was the vitamin water girl, the Jack Daniels girl, hanging, mm. hanging at samples at the side of the street. And then this woman wanted an admin assistant. So I applied for the job and she hired me. And basically after two weeks, she was like, you are the worst assistant ever. You're fired. <laughs> this is over. You're so unorganized. But she said, I think you'd be really good at sales. And we have this olive oil section of the company. And the company was called Dominica Fiore. And so I was like, I don't know. Olive oil, you know, sounds. Okay, well, we'll just try it. And then on my first sale, I sold 80 cases to Urban Fair on Davy Street. Whoa. And so I came home and told them all. And they, they popped open a bottle of champagne. And they're like, you're head of sales of North America. Like, I'd never even been to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, so it's like a big title. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I'd worked there for a few months, but sure, I didn't have an iPhone, a computer. We were broke. We just like moved over. We'd done the Galapagos Islands, spent every penny we had there. And um, I found out that I was working for this guy called Frank Gistra, who's a multi-billionaire. He started Lionsgate Productions and was mm. very entrenched in the food world. So it was really interesting because it was both sides. Like, sure, I was in CPG selling olive oil, but I was also watching these amazing entrepreneurs building mm. companies, getting into CPG, helping new companies grow. And so I was seeing it from both sides. So I worked at Dominica Fiore for a very long time, for nine years. It was amazing. And then, you know, traveled the world, um, Japan, across the States, into China selling. And then COVID hit. And I was like, what am I doing with my life? And I decided <laughs> to start a company. And here we are. Wow. wow. Yeah, you don't That's sound COVID compatible at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> <the travel>. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> not the adventurer's time, that's for sure. Absolutely not. But, you know, it really got me to appreciate BC more because for mm. work, I was traveling 110 to 130 nights a year, which is quite a lot. And oh, so yeah. when you can't, you're like, okay, what about this place that I've been in for so long? And yeah, it really changed my perspective. And now I slow down. I'm not moving as much. And I really appreciate that luxury. That's great. Um, yeah. Interesting. Awesome. Yeah. And so Hive, I, Hive is two parts. Um, we started off as a brokerage actually in 2020. Mm. And uh, 
we had this big idea that we were going to rep startup companies. Actually, a few who you've had on, not not early stage startup, but Moonshine Mama, Yogu, Gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and we're like, okay, this is this is our job. And a year later, we're like, this was the worst idea ever. We got <laughs> so much work. And like, I, I have a passion for work. I love it. But it's like, okay, you have to be the company's everything because you can't just be the salesperson. They need it all. Yeah, and so yeah. try take on 15 of those and then get any sleep or eat. It doesn't, doesn't work. So through that though, I kept seeing this issue of like, okay, the product gets in, they don't have the multi-million dollars that Pepsi has to spend on marketing, mm -hmm. merchandising and uh, like uh, marketing material shelf talkers. So what do they do? Well, they either get discontinued, they expire on shelf, or their promo dollars have just went to waste. So hence, we started Hive 2.0 in March of last year. And it really, it, it was solving a problem. Because now when the company got in, it wasn't that they just sit on the shelf, fingers crossed, hope for the best. It was like, we'll go in, we'll add the marketing material, educate the stores. We're doing all the things to help it really come off shelf. And we've seen it work in the States. You know, I, I didn't come up with this, although I'd love to say I did. It was like base makers and dirty hands. They've been doing this yeah. for a long time and been very successful. So we copied a bit of both of their recipes and then added a sprinkle of ours. And here we are. That's so interesting. Awesome. Yeah. I think that like there's there's a lot of people that don't even like understand the whole like distributor, broker, merchandising, like what they cover. And merchandising yeah. especially is, I think, a newer one. Dirty Hands is fantastic. That's a good example of in the US. But a lot of people listening are like, what What does each one do and what the differences are? So like from you've done the broker side and then now the merchandiser side, like how do you separate those two roles for people, you know, entering the space? Because I don't think most entrepreneurs have any idea entering that they even exist. Totally. Yeah. And it's a lot because there's a lot of moving parts. So, you know, it was the, the distributor is the they'll take the product in, then they'll make sure it gets to the store. They're delivering it for you. The broker is doing all your promotions at head office and is also doing the listings at head office. And then when the distributors done their job getting you to the store, the broker has got you listed. Hive comes in and make sure to build velocity and make sure you move. So like we call ourselves feet on the street, road warriors. We are truly the people in the store building your brand at retail. Wow. Yeah. All those beautiful displays, everything you see. I think Alex and I in the past both worked at Pepsi and I remember like the oh, yeah. the displays that they would build were just bonkers, like but a, a huge, enormous budgets. But that's like exactly what you're trying to recreate for some of these small brands that don't have the budgets to do what Pepsi can do. It's like, how do we get creative with, with the team of merchandisers? I think for some of our like, you know, listeners who aren't in the industry or maybe, you know, just young, younger uh, folks looking to start their career, like it's crazy how many people in the store don't actually work at the store who are working. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. people people don't know that uh yeah and no. <laughs> i'm sure you get asked all the time by customers and stores like where can i find this product mustard or whatever and you're like i actually don't work here yeah. but i think <laughs> over there yeah. um and it's 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 a whole um it's a whole layer of all of our lives because ultimately like you know retail is a big part of all of our lives it's like where we get everything that we need to survive um, yep. that people just kind of overlook. So it's, uh, and, and, and it's powerful, right? Like to what, to your point, like, I think people, you know, uh, don't realize how important merchandising is, uh, when, you know, they take, you might take it for granted, but it is, it is huge being able to process a shelf and see a brand that's got something to offer that, you know, is new and novel and, is something you need to digest the idea of and something like what, you know, I saw, I've seen your shelf talkers for, uh, for humble. Um, and, uh, and I mean, I thought they were great. So I, I mean, I think, I think that type of stuff is really powerful. It's at that last moment when someone's standing there and, and maybe they're, they're trying to choose between humble and hard bite or whatever. And it's like, that's the, that can be that deciding factor is giving that little extra information. So it's huge. Totally. And, you know, Humble's a great example because Alicia and Dan, um, they've actually been with us since day one. And so it's been so nice, this year and a half journey of both companies building together. And, mm -hmm. you know, from the time that they had the bag that just was ripping open or it didn't work. <laughs> and they, and they oh, you know, they're amazing. They just go back at it so quick. And so then we're going back in stores talking on their behalf. And, 
it's beautiful to see, you know, now to your to your point there, like they are on shelf and now they're a serious contender to any of the other oh, yeah. brands that sit in mm-hmm. there with them. And, you know, it's a journey to get there. But when you have the right marketing material on shelf, it looks beautiful. You know, you get three seconds to catch a consumer's attention or they're gone, right? It's it's quick. And so how can you stand out from the crowd? Well, make sure the retailer knows who you are. Make sure your product is like loud and proud sitting there. And then any chance to get um, an incremental display, go get it. And we're always yeah. trying. We're either hanging you off clip strips or putting you around the store. And, you know, just to make sure if they didn't go down that aisle that one day, they may see you in another aisle. And I think just to your point about retail, you know, look, it's it's sad times at the moment. There's no mm-hmm. staff in retail. They're really struggling. Yeah. It's tough. They're trying to control a store with thousands of people coming in every day. They're short staffed. There's too much stock in the back to sometimes bring out. And so, sure, we're for the brand, but Hive truly is for the retailer. Because if we don't have the retailers on our side, we have nothing. Mm. And so we're going out and helping them. We're going and helping them bring out the stock. We're making sure the shelves are looking full. We're making sure the tags are right, especially if they're on promo, because... If you spent money on promos and you're missing it, well, you're missing sales, right? So on both sides. So we're really always trying to watch that. Um, but yeah, so I, I do feel that although Hive, you know, our, the brands are our partners, the retailers are just as big, if not bigger in, in this whole merchandising company that we're, we're trying to build and be successful at. I love uh, what you just said um, from a sales standpoint. And I, I'm just curious, like... Because it sounds like you see your sales continuum as being all directions within the continuum which you exist, which I think is huge. And I think um, maybe talk a little bit about that. Like talk a little, a little bit more about about your your philosophy on selling and and you know some of the things that I think you you think you know if there's if there's two or three things on selling you, you'd want to impart to someone listening because I, I think you're you're your empathy for both sides just shone through. And I, I really like that. So I'd, if there's more, yeah, yeah. give me your we, platform. I've always, we always call ourselves Switzerland because we just sit in the middle because we, <laughs> we make money for the distributor, the broker, the retailer and the brand. Yeah. And we're very, you know, we sit alone and we want to help. We want everybody to rise and to win. And, you know, sales for the distributor is when they deliver the product, they know it's being brought out and it's turning. For the broker, they know their listing has not gone to waste and the promo dollars that both sides have put in are, you know, being utilized. We're really pushing hard to get it off shelf to make sure there's shippers or clip strips, whatever we can get. And then for the retailer, I was trying to think outside the box, like cross promotion. You know, if you have a brand that isn't known as well and you have a massive brand, like a great example is K-Pasa and Sapsucker. Sapsucker are strong, but K-Pasa are bigger they just are and that's you know revenue wise and they've been around longer so pair those two up which they just did across the country and build massive displays but for the retailer it's like double sales filling shopping carts for the brand is a huge success right because yeah they're the two purchases and so i think for us we're always trying to think how can we make people understand or educate more or get sales flowing and those baskets full another way is like nuts for cheese beautiful company i love it dearly but people don't know what it is it's a new brand it's a dairy free Mm -hmm. cheese so we've started to clip strip the cheese boxes on the shelf and you know it's, it's never been done before but it's pulling off and then putting postcards and coupons to encourage people to try and to educate because mm-hmm. otherwise like how do they know the yeah. store's not going to know to tell them because unfortunately they're just too busy they can't stand there educating consumers and then the brand but that brand in particular is in toronto how can they go over to thrifties on the island and stand there right yeah um, yeah, so I think just getting really creative, be it cross merch or be it secondaries, it's super important. Great insights, great insights. I mean, yeah, it's uh, it is it is always awesome when you find a true cross shop opportunity. I mean, just, as Justin said, we both worked at Pepsi, and I mean, they're better together. They're, Remember that was the campaign. Yeah, that was that was the thing to call chips it. and pop better together. Like, yeah. Who who would have thought uh, chips and pop? <laughs> Chips and pop. Yeah. together. But... Whoever thought of that, that's like. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that was brand new when we were there. That was the new thing. Remember? <laughs> Better together. Yeah. Chips and pop. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Kid Pass on the Sap Stokers was chips, dips, and sips. And so chips, that's dips. awesome. See, that's yeah. even that's even better together. That's yeah, that's chips, 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 since you got and you've got three there. That's even I mean PepsiCo does also own dips and they didn't add that. So, so they could have yeah. they, they, they should have done that. So you're it's ahead true. of them. It's an yeah, you're you're ahead of them. Some of <laughs> the, the displays there make a ton of sense. And I know just know from like everyday life in CPG, we're always trying to do that, right? Like basket building opportunities and items that work together and, and all that. And like creating that moment for the consumer that they get like, this is the backyard barbecue bundle. I can get everything right here, right? As a shopper, I love like, I don't like perusing as much. I just like to go and get my stuff. So when I see things like that, it like really hits for me to be efficient and grab it and go. Otherwise, I'll spend like an hour in an aisle like the vega aisle which doesn't even matter to me just I you so, I, so i need so i need to get in and out i need to get in and out otherwise i just get lost in there so i appreciate all those those displays i, I mean i wanted to go back to a little bit like when you first had this idea that you were like okay hey, I, I want to be an entrepreneur I want to start a company like pretty bold decision right you started with the the broker first and then went into merchandising like what were the steps you took like you're uh, just one person you know, like you created this business, you hired some people, was it just Vancouver locally? Did you expand to Toronto right away? Like, what did that look like? Because I know right now you're, I'll, I'll let you get to that, but you're, you, you've gotten a yeah, lot yeah. bigger, but like, how did it start and how did you, you scale it the way you did? Well, so with the brokerage, um, there was nine of us, I had a business partner, she's amazing. And, you know, we both just looked at each other and said, this isn't working. But here's the thing, I'd hired staff. So one person in particular, Brittany, who's still with me now, and hmm. um, she had come on a week. And so I met her in a coffee shop. And I said, listen, like, how the brokerage is shutting down, but uh, I'm going to start this merchandising company. She's like, excuse me. And I was like, we're the only two people on staff, but um, it's going to work. And she's like, oh, my <laughs> God. And I was like, okay. <laughs> And then she start crying. I start crying and say the coffee shop thought we were crazy. And she's <laughs> like, you want to leave? Just leave. And she's like, no, I'm going to stay. It's like, I still to this day wow. don't know. Because we didn't know each other. And so we just said, right. And so we jumped in our cars and basically like stock. We had still clients like Moonshine Mama and those clients who were so loyal to us. We were very lucky. And I called them all and I said, listen, exact same story. If you want to leave and nobody left and I just thought wow. my god how lucky we are and then um so Brittany and I would go around merchandising and then we just started to build out the team slowly we hired an admin we then just kept hiring field merchandisers and what's beautiful is actually everybody is still with us which is great like wow. we have a really awesome. high retention on staff which I love and again, how they did it, because we were working 12 hours a day, <sighs> driving to 10 stores a day, I had no system. And like, you know, people are like, oh, you girls are like magic and store. I'm like, are we? Because we have no <laughs> process. <laughs> we're just like, but the thing we have is that we're really hard workers, we're really honest, and we do good business. And what I always like stand by is that you can see our results. We're in WhatsApp groups with you. You're seeing, we're building out case studies. We're not just telling you, I'm going to go and build your display in Whole Foods. No, we're going to build the display, show you how many units were sold, show you all the things that we're doing in store to make sure that your dollar spent on us is, is not going to waste. And so I won't say we perfected it in BC, but we started to get it to flow in BC. And, um, you know, we still weren't profitable. Like we, this is in March. I remember going to the CHFA in October in Toronto for my first time. And I met Lauren from Left Coast that I, I had never met her before. And I started crying in the aisle. And I was like, we're not profitable. And she's like, just go around CHFA. Like your life depends on it and get clients. And that's exactly what I did. I went to the Propel aisle, to the Lebeau aisle, to agency, and I just was honest and said what we were doing. After that, we we took off. James from Righteous Gelato gave us our first start as a bigger brand, and he could have hired a much bigger company. He's like, now I'm going to give you your shot, and he did, and that was it. It just started to take wow. off from there. And then we opened up in Toronto in January. We have eight staff there now. In, oh. and we opened up in Alberta uh -huh. we just hired Julie she comes from Horizon for 10 years it's like incredible and so now it's 19 women across the country wow. Wow. in 
BC, Ontario, Alberta, and we're going to launch in Quebec in Q1. I was supposed to be September. Oh. I keep putting it off, but it's definitely Q1. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, we have um, over 30 clients. And, you know, some of them are Amy's Kitchen, uh, Zevia. It's, it's, it's incredible. Huge I, ones, yeah. Huge. Yeah. And um and still those like loyal supporters that have just been with us, like the Made with Local, Humble, the, the, they've just stood with us the whole way. And uh yeah, it, it feels very, very special. Um and yeah, so when you say like what was the plan, there was no plan, but it just <laughs> working. And then and then I remember somebody saying to me before. If it feels so hard that you want to run away, run. But if it just feels hard and you can get up the next day and keep going, keep going. And it never felt like I wanted to run away. Although like many weeks of tears, I I tell you, but (laughs) uh, it's flowing in a beautiful way now. And I feel very lucky to have the team we have because they treat it like their own. You know, it's 19 women who are just like, we know we've got something special. We truly care about the brand. We're so passionate about what we're doing. And I really think that that shines through with it. Amazing. Yeah, it's amazing the the expansion with it, right? Like, and I, I think you're being uh, too modest, but you have, like, I mean, to, to go to scale to a 20 person company and 30 clients and like, some of the the best products the entire grocery store represented by you and the team. Yeah. I think you knew what you were doing a little bit. <laughs> see it, see it, also, it works. It also sounds like you your admin skills have probably come a long way with 19 employees. I, I did notice one, one of one of the first hires was an admin and I thought the same thing. She knew. <laughs> she knew that she needed to get that. I know what I'm strong at and I know what I'm weak at. And that is like it's uh yeah. I have no organization there. And um we actually just hired a general manager, which is amazing. So awesome. that's uh, it's a massive step. I feel I wanted one for so long, but you know, you got to get to a certain point to justify something totally. like that. And yeah, it, it makes such a difference. I'm like, sometimes Huge. I step back and I'm just looking and thinking, like, these girls could rule the world. So they don't even need me. Yeah. It's just like what they're doing is it's phenomenal. Um, but yeah, it does feel especially since January that we've really just taken off like a rocket and we have huge supporters, you know, UNFI somehow let us partner with them, which I think is crazy because they're such a big distribution company and yeah. Horizon, Left Coast Naturals. And then the brokers across the country have just been incredible, passing us brands, giving us support. And, you know, there's many times where I thought, well, we take investment, what should we do? And and we didn't. And now we're profitable and um, I'm just in the process now of giving everybody options at Hive so we can all win together. And I think that it's uh, it's down to the people that we surrounded ourselves or by too, you know, the brands and uh, and everybody else. Yeah, incredible. It goes back to a bit where you, you talked about before on your sales philosophy, right? Like that's, you complement the distributors and the brokers and the retailers so well that everyone wants to partner with you right like they see you as like they're you're adding value to them as well so it's like it's a, an amazing partnership and i mean i got to imagine big distributors like unfi are very selective in who they partner with so it shows that yeah. you're doing something in- incredibly well totally yeah it was uh yeah it was, it was shocking but in an amazing way um yeah I, we feel that you know when we partner with the brand now, especially when it's coming from those distributors or brokers, we're, we're trying so hard because we're proving it to multiple people, mm-hmm. not just the brand, but we're proving it to the people who gave us a chance, right? And who are pushing people our way and giving those referrals. We never want to let anybody down. And I think that's another thing about Hive that's very unusual is that you won't ever let us go. We'll let you go <laughs> in the way that... <laughs> We'll know if it's not working after three mm-hmm. months and we won't mm-hmm. continue because we'll say to you, look, you're a great brand. Thanks for choosing us. But just for some reason, we can't move you. It's not working because our whole business is built on referrals. We're not mm-hmm. paying for marketing where, you know, I feel very, very lucky to come on podcasts like this. And but that's really as much talk as we're doing um, yeah. and outreach. And so, you know, we'll look at your results. We always say month one is fact finding. And then month two or three, two on three, watch us in the market. Let's all talk about it. And then we check in every month to say, right, are, is there ROI there? Are we producing? What did we make happen? And it's pretty crazy, you know, like for one of the rounds recently, we pulled the data and we, we filled 225 voids in Gosh. three months. 
it's yeah. crazy and you know um midday squares they're being great they help it they've great data so they help us build case studies and in thrifty foods we increased our sales by 300 percent in six weeks it's, <laughs> it's not right yeah. and yeah. so you know you're re- we're it's kind of like what i said at the start sure we'll tell you we're great and i think we are but it's uh it's we're showing you the data to prove it it's not just yeah. that you know i'm saying we have this incredible team and there you should go with them well, you should, but this is why. And I think yeah. to the retailer, you know, when we say that we'll make a difference in your store, we're telling them how and then showing them the numbers. And I think that that's so compelling and important because how many times have they heard that from a sales rep? Oh, we're yeah. going to change your life. We're going to do this. Well, we're, we're showing them. And then uh, I think, you know, when we started to go into all these stores at the start in BC, I remember them saying to us, please come back with a product that is going to sell. <laughs> Don't ask me for an end cap or a shipper when it's not going to move. And they gave me these um, parameters and they said, you know, if you can get an end cap to move in two weeks, a clip strip to move in a week and um, a case stock has to go in two weeks as well. We'll let mm. you have this, but don't ask me if it, it's going to be sitting on my floor for two months. And so that's exactly what we did. So now we don't ask them. You have to earn your space. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, you know, trying to explain that to brands anyways, you never want to get on the wrong side of the retailer. Like how can do their job oh. all day long. But if you're going to sit, take less space and work with it and make that move. And then we'll keep growing you out rather than saying, let's get an end cap. And then the retailer being like, don't bring this pro- product back to me because it just won't work. 100%. Yeah. And I mean, it hurts it for you. Like, I mean, that relationship is so important because it spans all your customers, right? Like you blow it up in one store with an end cap that sits there, needs to be broken down by the retailer themselves. And then it's like, it's not just the brand that had the end cap who suffers. It's like, so it's so, it's so, you know, it's like I said earlier, it's, it's that whole continuum of relationships and, and, you know, having that thoughtful kind of consideration for what's going to suck for everyone, what's going to help everyone win. Right. Yeah. So that's awesome. Love it. Uh, Amanda, you know, we've talked a little bit about what you have coming. Like Quebec sounds like it's fairly imminent, but like what's next for Hive? Like what's, what, what's, what, what's coming up in the next, let's call it 12 months that you want to share and, and let the the world know obviously nothing nothing top secret but yeah what what what's on the horizon yeah i feel like for us it's just really working on our data we want to get better like we have good data right now and great reporting but that can always improve and so it's a large focus for us right now on the retail side and the brand side we really want to get better there and then building out in every province so with the island we just took on Up Island. We always had Victoria. And so really just looking at like, okay, what do we have in each province and how can we make that better? So it's no like big mega news, but what I think it's going to really just help us with is, okay, how can we be better in every province and how can we be the best that we can be? And um, even though it's been a year and a half, we haven't hit that in every one. There's still so much room. In Alberta, we're super strong, um, but, you know, that's Calgary. Okay, well, are we going to Edmonton? Mm-hmm. Where else are we looking at? In Ontario, again, super strong, but are we going to go to cottage country or are we not? Are we really spending time in yeah. Ottawa? So I think just pulling that out. And uh, some exciting news, is we just hired Lindsay from Who Led Smart Suites. And uh, mm. yeah, she was with them for quite a long time and exited with them. And I think that... That's going to be pretty exciting. Um, just the, the the team that we're building, you know, I always say that we hire for tenacity and passion, not for experience. But if you can have the tenacity, mm. passion, and experience, it's pretty great. <laughs> we could never do that before. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if that's like an exciting answer, but it's just more, you know, I think that to the wrap around sentence of the whole question is, We've been scrambling for a very long time. Yeah, I think now we can sit and perfect more than tr- keep trying to move. I think it's a great answer. I mean, I think I Which, think it's I <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I think I think at the end of the day, like you know, as you are on your journey, like I think if I was, I, obviously I'm I'm in you know more mainstream CPG, but 
I think like that's the thing all your customers want to hear, I think, is is that you guys are going to continue yeah. to continual improvement, right? And that's, you know, improving data and, and how you guys take it. And I could tell you're already thinking, you know, like, you know, a really seasoned shopper marketer. And I think, you know, that that sounds like an awesome, awesome place to put the energy. So good answer. Yeah. I remember Ian from uh, Let Coast Natural said to me one day, you know, do you want to be the company that represents a thousand brands in each province? Or do you want to do 30 in each province really well? And it's definitely the latter. And I think that that's yeah. how we get here. Yeah. Very, very interesting. This, um, the next question we have, we ask all our guests, which is okay. their brand crush. For you, this is a very difficult question because you work with so many brands. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm going to make it a little easier on you and I'll allow you to say two or three so you can spread okay. the love. Not 30, okay. can't go okay. through 30, okay. but, maybe, but maybe two or three. And they can be ones that you work with or ones that you don't work with, ones outside of CPG that you just use in your everyday life. You know, what is a product or brand that you just love what they're doing or you use all of the time? Okay. I will name a few, but I'll be quick. Um, <laughs> I like Partake Non-Elk. What they're doing is very, very cool. And, yeah. you know, as we move towards this less alcohol, maybe not even cutting it out, they're just doing it in the right way and creating those awesome flavors that really do taste like what people are after. They want the beer taste. Cove Ocean are working with First Nations um, and I think it's Seaweed Farms, sorry, First Nations and Seaweed Farms and they're partnering and it's very cool because it's high protein puffs. Nobody's done that before. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of protein puffs out there, but these are BC, they're local and it's all while helping other people as well build their business, which I like. Um, I'm going to name two more. Sure. Made with Local. I love the way they support local. They're working with all, you know, people around them. I I think we can all go and get cheaper products. I know that's easier, but let's keep it like as tight as we can. If we can ever support, yeah. support Canadian, why not? And then my last one, I promise, is Cedar Valley. I just love those two. Mm. It's a mom and son. It's very cool. They're creating these tortilla chips. I don't know if I just, or pita chips if you guys have had them, but they're fully addictive. Like you open a bag, it's over. You are not putting it down. <laughs> and it's like they're healthy pita chips. So there's no crap uh-huh. in them. It's all straight up. And again, it's like supporting like local Canadian. I'll stop there, I swear. No, <laughs> so that, that, that's, 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 a good, that's a good list. I haven't tried those actually. I've tried the other products that you mentioned. Um, okay. And we know, I know some of those founders, but I haven't tried the, the new pita chips, but um, I'm already eating too many humble potato chips and other chips, but maybe this, <laughs> maybe this is a good, it's a good, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous part yeah, of the show. We gotta, but we, it, gotta, we gotta stop learning my favorite tasty part. snacks. Yeah. There's too many new tasty snacks. I can't, I can't keep going with this. Well, this is it. And I feel like in Canada now we really are getting creative, right? It's like yeah. humble or another one, you know, with their amazing bag. And then the chips are just getting tastier and tastier. It's like, it's very cool to sit back and watch. You know, sure, we're getting products coming in, but if we just look at Canada, it, it's on fire right now, which is mm-hmm. incredible to see the CPG world just blowing up with local and from every corner as well. Agreed. Agreed. Last question. Okay. Uh, we ask everyone um, to put themselves kind of in front of a, maybe it's your past self, maybe it's an audience of young people uh, setting out on, you know, perhaps an entrepreneurship journey in your case, but maybe just starting their career. Uh, maybe in sales. Uh, what would you want to tell that group of of young people that you think would help them? You know, kind of your soapbox moment. What what would you what would you want to say? Narrow and deep. Gain mm. retailers trust and love. You are better to be in twenty to fifty stores and sell really really well than be in five hundred doors expiring slowly on the shelf. So less is more, narrow and deep, take it slow and learn the lessons from the few stores that you're in. So when you do get into 500 stores, you are a rock star. You are super strong because you've put all of your learnings into action. That's such good advice because I think it's very hard for people to follow that. And it, and it's so true. Because it's exciting, right? It's shiny when all these d- stores are asking you and you're like, come on. But then you can't fill it because the PO is too high or, you know, there's there's a lot of things to it. Yeah. But yeah. I think if brands can can start there, they'll be, it's it's a foundation, right? And they can be super 100%. successful. Love that one. Love that one. It reminds me of something Mike Fata once said to us around. Um, it is, yeah. yeah you, you should be able to succeed in your local city. You should be able to build a business 
on your local city before you go everywhere else. So it's, yeah, I, I, I think it's it. a great, I think it's a great insight. Well, Amanda, I really appreciate you jumping on and, and chatting with us. We'll let you go enjoy the rest of your evening, but uh, it's just you. been wonderful learning from you and hearing more about your career and, and Hive and all the amazing things that you're doing. And I think it's going to, the, the things you've been able to accomplish in a, in a fairly short amount of time with Hive is just amazing and, and can't wait to see where it goes from here. Thank you so much for having me. It was really great to chat. Awesome to meet you, Amanda. Thank Have you. Have a great evening. Same to you guys. All the best. Bye. Thanks. That was an awesome chat. Uh, Amanda has a really great perspective and I really like her approach to sales in particular. And I mean, I'll, I'll expand on it as I talk about my takeaways, but yeah, I thought that was really, really fun chat and really cool, cool conversation. what do you think, Justin? Yeah, just, she's great. Super humble wild what she's been able to build in a fairly short period of time here like like the list of brands what like it was like from zevia to midday squares to righteous gelato like i mean we're talking about uh, i was doing rough math in my head on my estimates of how big all those business like it's hundreds of millions of dollars like when you add it all up and um, like and just like the businesses you want to work with Right. Like let's like those are really exciting upcoming businesses. A lot of like totally. local Canadian businesses, which is cool. And in the right space, natural products, great products, great taste, great benefits. Like and to have to build a team of like of 20 people, 30 amazing customers working with basically every retailer in Canada in in like a couple of years is yeah. mind blowing. Wow. Wow. Mind blowing. Very impressive. Yeah. Let's let's hear the key takeaway on on the sales piece, Alex. So my my key takeaway on sales was so she talked a little bit at the end about passion and tenacity, but one thing mm. she she didn't directly talk about, but she she demonstrated in some of her stories was just a commitment to integrity and candor and having crucial conversation. And I thought like you know she said she lost no customers when she transitioned from broker to to merchandiser. My opinion of why is. The fact that she was upfront, candid, and direct. And I think too often people get afraid to deliver what they think might be bad news or 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 you know, de- deliver something that could be a tough conversation. And it sounds like Amanda is committed to the integrity to have that conversation. And and, and again, with the person when you know the, she was in the coffee shop, like the, heading those types of conversations head on. Um is how you build sustainable trust from everyone, from employees and, and colleagues and your bosses and your co- your clients uh, and all you know directions up and down your sales continuum. And I just think she really, in her stories, without, you know, she didn't really call it out, but I'll call it out for her, you know, in a way that, that makes those relationships really solid. And I think that's something that people should, here and and you almost you know i used to work in a restaurant and i used to say when when i'd have problems at the table it was an opportunity to show someone how i'd handle it because you, you know a dinner goes perfectly at a restaurant and and they walk out and and yeah they're happy but if something goes wrong and you come over the top with honesty and and solutions and and show your passion your commitment to helping the person and that's kind of you know i i think that that is something that's a lesson that I think people can take away. It's just, it's a, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's really powerful for building relationships and differentiating yourself, and um, just good business requires integrity and 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 honesty. So that was mine. How about you? Mine was pretty related. So I was I was going to talk about yeah the importance of relationships. Obviously, not losing a single customer as she went over to to the new business, but I think sort of around the same vein was her like vulnerability. Right. Like she talked, yeah. she mentioned crying publicly like three different <laughs> times. Right. Like the one was in the coffee shop, one yeah. was at the trade show, you know, panicking about not being profitable, even talking about not being profitable. Talking totally. about like starting and not knowing what she was doing. Like I think her ability to be vulnerable is what has created a lot of these relationships, why she doesn't have turnover in her staff, and that people like Brittany, who I've met, have, have stuck with her throughout this why the customers stuck with her and take chances with her, why the retailers like working with her. So I think that that um, openness and vulnerability is is really, really important in building relationships and trust and just like eliminating some of those barriers. People oftentimes don't want to um, 
do that and show that side of them. And when they do, it it just creates that whole extra level of, of trust. Love that. Makes perfect sense. Well, guys, uh, if you're still listening, thanks so much for tuning in. A huge special thank you to Amanda for making herself available to come on and share her journey and, and what she's doing uh, in her amazing work with Hive. Uh, if you're not already, follow us on either LinkedIn or Instagram. Uh, definitely uh, give us a five-star review on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And I say this a lot and I'll keep saying it, reach out, uh, you know, touch base with us, let us know what you like and what maybe you, you'd like to hear on the show, and, you know, connect with us. Just, uh, you know, we're available um, and, uh, you know, we're open. So without anything else to add, Uh, We'll see you next time for another great conversation to learn more about this crazy CPG world we're in.